Hi, I'm Brett, and today we've got another video update on our billet block engine rebuild. And if you've seen our previous uh, videos, um, which I encourage you to do so, we've spoken about the block on its own, the heads, the way the front timing assembly fits, the variable cam control, the benefits and the disadvantages of top mount versus front mount, the different inlet manifolds. We've spoken about extractors, sumps, and we've also spoken about turbos. So today we're going to talk about the whole assembly almost ready to fit into the engine. And um, in the next couple of minutes, we'll summarize that. We'll load some videos and some still photos to the bottom of this channel, and you can refer to our other videos. So as you can see, being an STI, it's got the red inlet manifold, which comes with the uh, TGVs, which is tumble generator valve. Now, in this particular model here, we've deleted the TGVs out of the inlet manifold, which is in that riser there, to reduce the restriction, which is a, an airflow improvement opportunity. We've also fitted the front of the timing case assembly with the variable cam control um, inlet on this side and exhaust on this side with the timing belt in between. We've refitted the GFB alloy pulley and also we've started fitting all the supplementary um, engine sensors such as um, uh, knock sensor, um, uh, crankshaft position sensor, then obviously at the back here you've got all the cam position sensors and of course all the other parts are fitted together. So let's just talk about some of the other supplementary parts that we've fitted to the engine. So if we come around the back you can see the turbo is now fitted and I'll get my cameraman to come around. You can see just how tight a fit it is down inside here where the turbo gets very very close to the back of the block where it bolts up to the um, uh, the gearbox housing because this mechanically is the biggest turbo you can fit to this situation. We've got a high flow three inch silicon intake which is the biggest intake that you can fit underneath the inlet manifold to fit the silicon intake um, connection to the compressor housing. And you'll notice if I get my cameraman to look vertically from the top, you can see how it actually has to offset a bit because as the turbo mechanically gets bigger, the center line moves out this way. Now also on this particular model, you'll notice this angle here, which is a little bit different, but we'll talk about that in a sec. But this silicon intake pipe, depending on the quality and the brand that you choose, has a huge effect on the performance engine because some of them are very, very soft and squishy under maximum engine load. They actually can collapse and squat and suck in together due to vacuum. And this is sometimes a very, very hard problem to diagnose unless you've got the car on a dyno and you're watching it carefully. But also at the same time, that angle needs to be done correctly so the pipe doesn't slip off the inlet to the turbo um, when the engine is operating because everything tends to move around a little bit and this particular part here we've seen many examples where poor quality aftermarket silicon intakes slip off the nose of the turbo and you end up with a huge air leak here which ultimately can cause catastrophic engine failure. So the other thing that I touched on a minute ago was in our previous videos is the later models with electronic throttle and how there is an offset required to fit the compressor housing with a top mount intercooler. So let's just have a look again here and I'll show you. This is the electronic throttle control motor which is run by the engine ECU because it doesn't have a cable position to pull the throttle butterfly open and close. It's actually controlled via the ECU via a signal from the accelerator pedal. So this part here on the later models took up a lot more room and the throttle body intake is actually a little bit more this way. Now you notice on the later model Subarus they've got a bit of an offset on here. So of course, as you go to a bigger turbo, this becomes a bigger and bigger offset. Now inside here, it's all machined and um, flows a lot better than what it looks a bit ugly on the outside. But over the top here, we've got to fit the 90 degree silicon hose that then goes around and then up to the underside of the intake of the rear of the uh, top mounted intercooler. And these are some of the little things that a lot of people overlook when they're building an engine like this because if you didn't have that offset on the compressor housing, mechanically you can't fit the silicon hose to the intercooler because the plug for the throttle body, um, electronic throttle body control mechanism just doesn't um, make it enough room and it limits the amount of room that you've got to connect all those parts to the earth. So that's one of the things that you need to carefully consider. Um, another thing that this car's got fitted is the GFB electronic control blower valve, which has got this little tiny servo motor, which allows the blower valve to be controlled both internally venting and externally venting. So effectively gives you a volume control knob that you can control the blower valve from inside the car. And um, one last little thing I want to touch on, just some of the small things that you'll notice when you're going for aftermarket block assemblies before we turn the engine over, you'll notice this little gap here. Well, that, that is the right hand and the left hand side of the two split halves of the 
um, crankcase assembly for the short block, and that's the joint in between. But you'll notice when Will All manufactured this block, they left a nice little slot there to put a screwdriver in there to pry the two components apart when you want to dismantle the engine um, and fit the um, crankshaft, pistons and rods. And there's a similar one of those on the bottom side of the engine. So let's just turn the engine over and I'll show you what it looks like from underside with the extractors fitted. And this part here, be a bit careful when I turn this over. So you can see here quite easily the aftermarket extractors which we spoke about before in our previous video, how it's critical to make sure that you've got a sump to fit the equal length extractors because when you're running original factory exhaust manifold, this side here goes on that side of the oil filter and on the early model 2 liter SDI engines there wasn't a cutaway in the sump. The later models factory had a cutaway in because the sump was a common sump for the Japanese twin scroll turbo engines which have a similar design exhaust manifold around this area but then they've got twin up pipes to the underside of the twin scroll turbo. If you want to know about how twin scroll turbos um, work, have a look at our other video update. So when you're running these types of extractors to give you choice, you need to make sure you've got the right sump to suit as well. So down inside here the oil cooler will fit, the oil filter will fit on top. You can see we've got the left and the right hand engine mounts which bolts to the front cross member and of course this on one side here is part of the variable cam control pulley assembly which controls the oil supply to the exhaust variable cam and on the other side you've got a similar setup here for that side as well. So there's some of the things that often you may not see when you've got the engine um, fitted to your car. So the next step we're going to do is finish putting all the rest of the components together. I'll then show you what this all looks like when it's fitted in the engine bay. But check out our previous videos, there's quite a few of them now on this particular engine build to help you know about what works and what doesn't. And of course you can check out the bottom of the video channel here for some uh, links to the photo page as well for some still photos of these components. Of course you can go to our fantastic new website, put in um, some keywords, whether it's extractors, or Killer B or Sump or anything like that and you can do a search command but of course you can just put in your year make and model where it's a Mazda, Mitsubishi, Subaru, Holden, Ford, even Alfa Romeo we've got parts listed to suit your particular models from Powerflex to GFB, Whiteline, DBA and a whole heap of others which all cross reference there into your exact year and make and model. But for now my name is Brett Middleton, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram and I really hope these videos are helping you understand more about your Subaru EJ Series engines. Bye for now.